Hello everybody, Trend Analytics here once again uh, on a very nice uh, summerish type day here in the upper Midwest, particularly in Wisconsin. We're finally getting some nice weather here. We have bits and pieces, but not consistently. Anyway, uh, recap on the markets today. Uh, the uh, video posted yesterday uh, was kind of a all points bulletin with gold and silver. And boy, do they have a tear today. I have, uh, from a technical analytical uh, insight on silver, I haven't seen a day like that in silver in probably, boy, it's got to be, if it wasn't two, maybe three years ago, it's been close to 10 years ago, quite honestly. Um, I... I'm kind of somewhat busy this afternoon, uh, so I haven't been able to get a chance to look at the CNBC um, uh, uh, talking heads, if you will, to see what they're saying about it. I'm sure they're mentioning something about it, but that is, just like in the last video, that is the hidden monster under the rock. Boy, it came out today, and it came out in a big way. Uh, and silver still hasn't reached any kind of technical level from what I can see. Um, the next technical level is just over 33, um, and that's in the SLV. Physical, I'm not quite sure where that's at. Uh, physical and SLV are different. Uh, they are different beasts uh, in, a lot, in, a, in a lot of ways. But uh, gold, I mean, even gold reaching all-time highs quite some time ago, coming back once again uh, and not reaching its all-time uh, highs of just over 225 an ounce. But, uh, boy, you want to talk about making a statement. That's the way you do it uh, in the marketplace. But will the market talk about it? Probably not. Uh, main reason being is because it's not dividend-paying. Um, it's considered uh, high consolidation and fair risk. Uh, but in times like we're having now, it is the time to be in those sectors. Um, copper um, and uh, uh, ticker uh, FCX, boy, talk about a roll there. Um, that's, that's putting a statement out there. Um, and the statement being that the market has basically seemed to peak more or less in valuation. You're gonna have pockets that are undervalued. Um, there's plenty of stocks out there that are like that. But as in the market in a whole and indexes especially that follow uh, rises in a whole, I feel I've kind of peaked at this point in time. Uh, so I have started looking abroad. Um, China today just recently issued uh, some stimulus on property development uh, that sent gold and silver in an absolute tizzy today. Um, so I would look to, to see advancements there. Uh, and then stimulus in general, what that normally does is it creates uh, a boost to the upside. So with that said, um, because China's economy has been suppressed for quite some time, they're well below the neutral line uh, when it comes to the pre-pandemic days because they have not had very good um, development in uh, regulating the effects of the coronavirus and the pre the post-pandemic uh, environment. Um, there is definitely an, uh, opportunities in the um, certain parts of Europe in certain stocks and in uh, the more well diversified wealth zones in China. Um, that is definitely the place. Um, a couple that I could just name off the top of my head. One had been an absolute tear today and that was JD.com. Uh, another one is Albibaba. Um, that, I anticipate that one's going to be on quite the tear as well. It was up today. Um, and what does that tell us? It tells us that the uh, consumer is starting to come out with stimulus once again in Shanghai and the Chinese areas. Um, do I favor that? Uh, no, I don't. But from a, uh, uh, 
a person that wants to develop capital and um, want to see uh, portfolio gain and profit spread, you have to go where the money's going to be. And, and it's hard to say, it's hard to swallow that pill, but quite honestly, it's in those regions at this point in time. Um, you do have pockets of uh, advancement um, in the domestic markets here in the U.S., uh, but overall, um, that's where the growth is going to be, plain and simple, um, for the generalized growth uh, because they have been so suppressed for quite some time. So that's it for now. Um, you know, you know, one tall tale indication that really kind of solidified the trend and analytic view, in my opinion, uh, and I had mentioned this in a few different videos, is um, a utility stock that has been performing very well, even in times where it shouldn't be. Uh, Jim Cramer on CNBC and Mad Money has, had covered that, that there's different sectors performing well all at the same time that typically don't happen. I think it's happened three times in investment history really since uh, pre-Great uh, Depression uh, in the early 30s. And what that tells me is a typical defensive stance, even if the markets are increasing and utility stocks were on an absolute tear, gold and silver with, were withheld a little bit, and then all of a sudden utilities seem to peak out. There's a little bit of value there yet, just, and I'm talking about overall uh, sectors that identify growth or pullback is what I'm talking about now. And uh, one of the gauges I was using, as mentioned in a few previous videos, was Nextera Energy, ticker NEE. -E. That was, been, was at on an absolute tear. I still feel like that stock's going to peak out somewhere around the 80, uh, maybe 82 level. I got to look at the technicals on that, but that seems to be fairly accurate. And with uh, Nextera Energy kind of coming to life, uh, later in this, uh, this business cycle up toward recent all-time highs in the indexes, Dow, uh, NASDAQ, Russell, two, uh, 2000, and the S&P 500, which is a very popular one, uh, it came to life late, and it seems to have reached close to a peak. So it had a lag, and all of a sudden it caught way up. Now what you're seeing is you're seeing gold and silver creating the... Uh, maximum tear effect, if you will, especially in silver, like I mentioned earlier in this video, maximum tear effect right there. Um, and silver's got a ways to go. Um, copper could potentially be in more of a short squeeze type situation. Um, I wouldn't go in the actual copper area, but the uh, stocks that are um, subjected to profit gains from copper are going to be fairly decent. Uh, one of which I mentioned earlier, and again, that's FCX. It was on an absolute tear today. You need to diversify yourself properly. Um, you don't go in full silver, full gold. I knew silver was going to be rising up quite a bit, as I mentioned, probably well over a month ago, um, but more solidified as in the past uh, two days to actually show that evidence. Um, so you don't want to weigh yourself too much in those areas because you're 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 going to regret that. Um, and that's from past experience. Uh, that's my thoughts for now. Uh, looking forward to your comments in the comment section. And uh, this is kind of more of a, a community type uh, channel. So if you see stocks uh, that you want the public to uh, take a look at and evaluate for themselves, thinking that it's a very good time to get into those individual stocks on a depressed uh, valuation and PE level, uh, put a comment in the comment section and uh, let people take a look at that. Um, and we'll, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's designed for me to be a community channel, basically. I just uh, provide my insights uh, because I've been gifted uh, with trend and analytics uh, way of mind thinking, uh, seeing different valuations and how they react to different asset groups. But that's it for now. Y'all take care. Have a great weekend.